For today's video, I want to look at something called Catalan's constant. And in fact, we're going to find a nice integral representation of this constant. So there's this nice paper that I found that has like hundreds of representations of Catalan's constant. So it's from D. Bradley. He's at the University of Maine. And I point out that he's in Maine because I had a visiting position at Bowdoin College in southern Maine that I really enjoyed for a year. The name of this paper, which is pretty easy to find online, is Representations of Catalan's Constant. Maybe before we talk about what Catalan's Constant is, let's look at some similar numbers. So first up is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. So this is the well-known Basel problem, and it's known that this adds up to pi squared over 6. This is the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 2. Okay. And then similarly, we could calculate that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared is pi squared over 12. So this is the alternating sum of the reciprocal of the squares. But what if we just take the sum of the reciprocal of the odd squares like this here? Well, we get pi squared over 8. So it seems like these three sums are pointing us towards the alternating sum of the reciprocal of the odd squares should maybe also depend on pi squared. But in fact, it doesn't. It's a constant all its own, which is generally denoted by the label of an uppercase G and is known as Catalan's constant. So just like the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 3 or 5 or really odd positive integers can be thought of as important constants on their own, this thing g or the alternating sum of the reciprocal of the odd squares is also an important constant on its own. Okay, so now that we've reviewed this a little bit, I want to dive into a nice integral representation of this constant. And the integral we will show represents Catalan's constant is given by half the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x over sine x dx. But we have a little bit of work to get there. So we're going to start off with a nice substitution. So the substitution that we'll use is y equals tangent of x over 2. That means that x is equal to twice the arctan of y. So that's what we get if we evaluate both sides of this equation with the inverse tangent function. And then obviously we'll have to multiply by 2 in order to isolate x. Okay, so now let's uncover what the sine of x is given this substitution. Well, since this is sine of x and this is tangent of x over 2, we probably want to write this in terms of sine of x over 2. And we'll need to use a double angle formula for that. So let's notice that sine of x is the same thing as sine of 2 times x over 2. But then the double angle formula tells us that this is 2 times sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. Okay, so that is our value of sine of x. But now we can start simplifying this a bit more. So notice if x is equal to twice arctan of y, that means dx is equal to 2 times dy over 1 plus y squared. So that's important to keep in mind. Furthermore, we can draw a triangle of this situation in order to find what sine x is. So maybe our triangle would look something like this. So it's a right triangle. Here our angle is x over 2. So the fact that tangent of x over 2 is y tells us that we can use the opposite to have length y and the, and the adjacent to be length 1, making the length of the hypotenuse y squared plus 1 using the Pythagorean theorem. Then we can use this completed right triangle to find the value of sine x over 2 and cosine x over 2. So in particular, sine of x over 2 will be y over the square root of y squared plus 1, and cosine of x over 2 will be 1 over the square root of y squared plus 1. So in the end, we will have 2 times y over y squared plus 1 because those square roots cancel that are in the denominator of each of these terms. So we've got almost all of the parts that we need to transform this integral. 
The only thing that we're lacking is what's happening to the endpoints. So notice if x is equal to 0, y is equal to tangent of 0, which is also 0. When x is equal to pi halves, that means y is equal to the tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. OK, so now we have consolidated all of the parts necessary to completely change this into an integral involving only y's. So let's see what we get. We'll have 1 half. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to 1. x is equal to 2 arctan y. So let's write that. So we have 2 arctan y. And then dx will be this object. So I'll write that as 2 times dy. And then I'll go ahead and bring this y squared plus 1 into the denominator. Then furthermore, this sine x is this thing right here. So that's going to be 2y over y squared plus 1. Now we can see a lot of stuff cancel. So let's notice that this y squared plus 1 cancels with this y squared plus 1. This 2 right here will cancel with this 2. And then finally, this 2 will cancel with this 2. So in the end, we're left with the integral from 0 to 1 of arctan of y over y dy. Now we just need to calculate that thing. But we're going to calculate that thing using a series expansion of the inverse tangent. That shouldn't be too big of a surprise since we're going for this object, which is called Catalan's constant, which is defined as a series. So maybe before we do that, let's write arctan as the antiderivative of something. I think that's an easier way to see the series expansion. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over y, and then the integral from 0 to y of 1 over z squared plus 1 dz dy. So let's talk our way through that to make sure this makes sense. The antiderivative of 1 over z squared will be the inverse tangent of z. Evaluated at y and you get this. Evaluated at 0 and you get 0. So we're good to go there. Now we're going to use the standard expansion of a geometric series for this 1 over z squared plus 1 term. So that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over y the integral of 0 to y of our sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n, z to the 2n, dz dy. Okay, so let's talk our way through that. This is a geometric series right here where our starting term, which is sometimes called a, is 1, and our common ratio is minus z squared. So that's how we get that expansion. Now let's bring that sum outside of the integral. That leaves us with this sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity. We've got our integral from 0 to 1, and then our integral from 0 to y of now z to the 2n over y dz dy, and I'll take my minus 1 to the n, and I'll bring it out here like this. Now let's do our innermost antiderivative. So what's that going to give us? Well, we're going to increase our exponent of z by 1 and then divide by the new exponent. So that's going to give us our sum. As n goes from 0 up to infinity, we have minus 1 to the n. And then the integral from 0 to 1 of, let's see, that's going to be z to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 times y evaluated from 0 up to y dy. So we've got something like that. Now let's bring this 2n plus 1 out. And then we'll see that when we evaluate this at y and then divide by y, that's going to change back into a y to the 2n. So that's going to leave us our sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the 2n dy. Now, one more application of the power rule, and we will be there. So notice the integral of this, well, we raise the exponent by 1 and we divide by the new exponent. 
Dividing by the new exponent will be giving us another 2n plus 1 in the denominator, but then we evaluate that at 0 and 1, so that just becomes 1, other than this 2n plus 1 that comes in the denominator. So in the end, this turns into the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity, minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 quantity squared. But now if we want to make this look exactly like what we had on the previous board, we would want to do a little bit of a re-indexing. So let's notice if we replace n with n minus 1 in this sum, then that's going to change this from an n to an n minus 1. But n minus 1 and n plus 1 have the same parity. Since we're just putting those in the exponent of minus 1, we might as well use n plus 1. And then if we replace n with n minus 1 here, this plus sign turns to a minus sign. This starting point goes from 0 to 1. And now we've written it exactly like we had previously, and we named that thing g, Catalan's constant. So in the end, we have shown that this integral is equal to Catalan's constant, which is exactly our goal. And that's a good place to stop.